Alrighty, guys, today I am talking my warband and or skirmish rules for my D&D homebrew system. Now, I wanted to come up with a system of rules that I could use for combats that are not necessarily your traditional D&D dungeon combat where you have like your four players, maybe a couple hirelings, fighting against either like a big uh, monster type or a group of maybe like eight, maybe even ten monsters, where anything higher than that just starts getting way too difficult to keep track of, and the enemy's turns would start taking half an hour to resolve all these combats or all their attacks. But I didn't want to go as far as to use like any sort of mass combat rule system where the outcomes of what these like hundreds and or thousands of units, like the outcome of their battle results just all being abstracted by a single role. I wanted something in the middle or something to resolve combats of like 20 to 40 type individuals like something you might see in like warhammer skirmish or mordheim something along those lines but in D D. and so well, part of the reason i wanted to do this in my system i'm trying to design it less for the classic dungeon crawl and more for a uh, siege combat where you either might have the players defending a, a castle or something along those lines, where maybe they have the town guard or a militia or something along that uh, and helping them defend. So they might have like 10 guys, 20 guys on their side. They might be attacked by a horde of like 40 orcs. Uh, so, something along those lines. And or vice versa, where the players are attacking some orc camp where they've hired some mercenaries, some uh, hired swords to fight alongside with them. And yeah, so obviously you can't use traditional D&D combat because it'll take an hour to get through a single round. And so my first attempt at this, when I first tried to make this system, I used the like the GURPS mass combat system and I tried to scale it down so that instead of the rules being used for elements of regiments of troops that were in the hundreds of thousands, just super small elements of three to five to ten, something along those lines. And it effectively worked that instead of it being like a part of D and D combat, it just at the top of the initiative each round. I resolved this sort of like war band contest check, where each war band made a check, and they got bonuses or penalties depending on the circumstances and the conditions they were fighting in, uh, and all the various elements that composed their war band. Uh, but this started to become difficult and clunky to work into regular D&D combat because I had to start translating how the player's actions affected this check in this warband conflict and like uh, how the amount that the players, like the amount of damage they were dealing directly reflected like how the this warband like needless to say it was just it was very complicated and i wrote tons and tons and tons of pages of rules for it which i ultimately ended up to decide to just throw out because it it just felt like an entirely different game than the D, &D combat and uh, i will say the one pro that this had the one thing this had over my like current system is that it had like a mechanical way to reflect a warband being composed of multiple different types of units so you could have like a band of 20 to 30 guys 
that might have been made up of five skeletons, five zombies, five ghouls, and five undead direwolves, something along those lines, and that all of them fighting together could all be resolved with just a single check. Whereas in my newest system, they are would each be their own individual warband and would each need to make their own check, which uh, at the end of the day is actually fine. And so another thing I need to note upon, comment upon for the decisions I made or like the reasons why I made the decisions that I made, it has to do with the D&D. 5e turn which my system is like primarily 5e that it uses as a base um uh but i dislike bonus actions and the free actions and the environmental actions and i dislike having to even for a martial character have their turn take multiple minutes because they need to figure out well, do I want to take my five foot step first and then perform this bonus action? And then for my action for turn, I can do this. But then if I use my action search first to disengage, then I can. And then when they start attacking, they might they have to start thinking of like, OK, well, maybe I'll assign this attack first to this guy. And then depending on how much damage he takes, then I might choose to use my second attack against either this enemy, or maybe if it's less than this threshold, I'll start attacking this guy. And I just, I, I dislike all these mass amounts of choices that a player can make, and all the amount of actions and different things they can do during their turn. I have very much so... Uh, simplified everything down to just you take your movement and you take your action so if you want you can just tell me what it is that you want to be doing in these next six seconds and I will tell you how that will mechanically translate to our your current situation and what dice you need to roll rather than trying to like min max every single turn by making sure like okay well i use my i want to have to use my bonus action to do this that or the other which i don't blame players for because if you have the bonus action like why would you not try to find something to do with it you you would just be wasting a free resource available to you so I, I i blame the game not the players uh but either way it makes one turn it has the potential to have one turn bloat into a multi minute uh, bore snooze fest for every other player. Uh, now, obviously, uh, like getting rid of all these things and getting rid of even multi attack as a whole has like huge ramifications and it entirely changes multiple aspects of the game because like the whole game, once you reach fifth level, is balanced around well these martial classes get multi-attack and all these other classes that cast spells don't get multi-attack so you have to change a whole lot of things in order to balance that and this warband combat rule system that I came up with is one small sort of push towards trying to help those martial classes that i have since gotten rid of multi-attack for and i i have done a lot a lot a lot of other stuff to change you know, making martial classes anywhere close as good as other classes without their multi-attack. But it's just, for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to be talking about the one thing I've made uh, regarding these, like, warband combat rules. Um, so, well, okay. Yeah, so the rules themselves, basically, I just went with the one of the most like a simple solution that is by no means original this is not something i've come up with this is something that has been around since the dawn of both D D, and specifically like soon after 5e came out people homebrewed rules where they used hordes of enemies uh basically kind of like the rules for swarms like rat swarms but with just multiple humanoids or whatever other kind of creature instead. Which, that system I do think 
is elegant in the sense that it uses rules that already exist, so you don't have to change a lot of the game. Uh, but I do find it causes a lot of other problems in other areas. And I, I just... So the rule system I came up with is basically to treat multiple enemies of the same kind as though they had banding from Magic the Gathering, which if you're familiar with Magic the Gathering, a lot of people think banding is extremely complicated or it's notorious for having that like a uh, sort of image attached to it that is like the most complicated uh, mechanic in Magic and that's the reason why they don't use it anymore, which to be fair, it is needlessly complicated in Magic, but that's mostly because they let creatures of different types band together. Like, you could have a trample creature and a first strike creature band with a creature with no abilities, and then it starts to become a little bit of a nightmare. Uh, so my solution is just like, okay, so three orcs can band together, three goblins can band together, but you can't have two goblins and two orcs band together. And so, so basically, any group of three, they all attack all at once. And, uh, or, or conceivably, even more than that, I've sort of made this uh, delineation, I suppose, where like uh, a group of like 15, they can start attacking with groups of five or more, so that a band of 20 orcs could make four single attack rolls, and then they just make a damage roll depending on the amount of attacks that they would have made. To determine whether or not creatures are allowed to fight in a band, I've borrowed from Warhammer 40k rules. So if multiple creatures are within, like using battle mat rules, if they are within two inches of each other, they can fight together in a band. And uh, uh, this just dramatically reduces the amount of dice rolls that are made at the table for any given combat. And uh, it also, uh, like a problem I've sort of encountered is that if you have like 10 orcs attacking, you cannot afford to spend any amount of time narrating that because just rolling to hit and to damage and to hit and damage is just going to take such a long amount of time. I mean, you're just trying to speed things up to get to the next player's turn. You can't sit there and describe each orc swing as slashing and cutting through and or glancing off or bouncing off your armor. Uh, you just need to get through those rolls to get to the next player's turn. So this sort of helps that because now if you can have a band and you can have an entire group of 20 orcs attack in just four rolls, you can actually somewhat get away with describing each of them narr narratively uh, as you describe, like the volley of arrows blocking out the sun or the stampede of orcs trampling over you, like one of those Black Friday uh, mall videos. Uh, so yeah, so five orcs, you like, you would just make one attack check, like a group of five in a huge band, and then if they hit, you just roll the damage of all five of them, and if you miss, they all miss. This does have, like, a few problems. Uh, like, on the one hand, I, I think it's, like, generally kind of disadvantageous for bands of enemies to willingly attack together. Uh, the only like upside I've sort of come up with is that, well, in my system, I have reverted back to the damage reduction of 3.5 as opposed to the resistances and vulnerabilities of 5e, which again, the vulnerabilities, resistances, much more elegant, but much less nuance. Uh, so in this system, if a player and I've also I've changed armor to provide less armor class but it does now provide damage reduction so in this new banding system like 20 goblins that might otherwise if they all shot their short bows together against a knight would might be like incapable of dealing more than one or two points of damage 
if they all shoot together, could conceivably like deal a substantial amount of damage to that knight. Which uh, some people may think like, well, what's the point of armor then? If you can't, if it doesn't defend against these multiple small attacks now. Uh, but otherwise, like, it was, on the other hand, it's like, okay, so it's impossible for a volley of goblin arrows to even, like, harm a knight. Uh, so, th so this is sort of, like, my compromise between the two. Is this, like, banding sort of method of attacking. It gives a reason for creatures to want to band together so that they can overcome that damage reduction. And... I like I, I do think it makes I I can excuse the or at least I can gaslight myself into believing that a volley of arrows from a horde of goblins would deal more damage than like uh multiple individual arrows fired against a knight because uh, you're just more likely to find that chink in the armor and for something to slip through and for you to get lucky. Uh, especially if you're talking about hit points as more of a less of a reflection of literal bodily harm and more of both bodily harm and your will to continue fighting and your uh, like the, the stamina that you have and everything else that would keep someone in a fight and so yeah, there's a couple other problems, like one, handling natural ones and natural 20s. I, I am a big fan of, like I know in 5e, nat ones and nat 20s don't exist as much as they used to. Like they do in combat, or at least nat 20s do exist in combat as having a mechanical effect. But I, I, I'm a fan of the nat ones being disastrous fumbles and botches. Uh, so in this system... Nat 1s allow counterattacks to hit more often, and nat 20s, instead of doubling damage, just uh, counts as a single other attack being added. And uh, Now, tracking HP can be a little difficult, but I have, like, bands basically track HP in such a way that like whenever they take an amount of damage that is equal to a single creature's hit point max it's like well like what, what's an orc got in 5e uh like 12 15 hit points so if i were to translate this into 5e like a band of three orcs would have 45 hit points and each time they take 15 uh points of damage they lose one of the orcs so th this is sort of how I try to offset the, or th this is one of the little things I've done to offset the lack of multi attack is that I have very much so just very upped the amount of damage that martial classes do. So a fighter might be dealing 20, 30 damage on their turn with a single attack, which means they can kill an orc, and then either injure another, or kill two orcs uh, just with their single one attack, as long as those orcs are all a part of a band. Which, in a sense, kind of reflects multi-attack, in that they are hitting and killing multiple creatures, but just they're making a single attack roll and a single damage roll to resolve that killing of multiple orcs. And where this banding starts to get really is uh, with any sort of special abilities, conditions, status effects, anything like that. I obviously, when my first, or not my first, but one of the iterations I had of this system of rules was it sort of allowed a rogue to backstab a group of goblins and then kill like 11 goblins which i very much so did not want that to be the case i i wanted if anything for this to be a means to even more so enforce the roles of classes in a combat i i wanted rogues 
to be very good at killing single targets, like lieutenants and generals and all of that. And I wanted like a fighter to be able to be good at cleaving through hordes of little goons. And for like a wizard's fireball to be the most devastating thing you could use against a horde of enemies, a band of enemies. And so to reflect this, I've just sort of said that like if you use any ability that targets a single enemy, like if you try to knock prone an enemy, use sneak attack against an enemy, that separates that enemy from the band. They are no longer a part of the band. If you use a single target effect, and then it just kills exclusively that enemy, or affects that enemy. Uh, and for any group abilities, like Bane, for instance, that will only have an effect if it affects half or more of the enemy. So you could run into a big band and use your thunder clap or whatever it's called and uh you know knock a bunch of guys prone i don't know if that that would just knock them back but like if you had an effect that like was a wave around you and knocked everything prone if it would knock half or more of them prone it just knocks all of them prone instead and if it would only knock one or two guys in a band prone it they are immune to the effect and they don't have anything happen to them instead so and same thing for saving throws etc uh or i'm sorry with saving throws they you don't roll an individual save for each guy that's effect you just make one save and then that affects all of them just like uh when they attack so th this is definitely not perfect there are certainly many issues that can arise that i don't think this handles uh like perfectly but i do think for the most part this sort of system is just going to be the best means i have of dealing with like a 20 on 20 combat uh you know if anyone's got anything that they think could improve this which i'm sure there's tons and tons that could be added to improve this you know don't don't uh, hesitate to let me know all right i'll see ya